All right, continuing with sketching for our fantasy uh, creature composite. I have created the basic shapes. And now, um, using my inspiration of these Pokemon and using my own kind of creativity, thinking about where can I source references for this kind of creature. So I'm going to go ahead and, and flesh it out a little bit with green. Because I have the skeleton here in blue, which is incredibly important. I have the action lines showing the direction of the different references in red, and that's important. But now I have to think, okay, how does this skeleton get fleshed out with muscle? And I'm thinking a really pretty big chest is necessary. You know, a lot of muscle there to support the arms and this neck, which is going to be even heavier. Right? Going down to a pretty thin waist. I'm thinking of uh, kind of what I can do with the jaws or the eyes. I don't know if I want to keep it minimal or not, but I want to get a sense of if I want the eyes on the side of the head, like a horse, or at the front of the head, like a cat, or, you know, what would work. Um, and then I think I want to extend this kind of shield-like spike hat thing I'm going to do I think I want to extend those a little bit to the back, at least for this first part. And that helps the overall shape and silhouette. And then these back legs, really, I just want to be kind of as minimal as possible so they don't distract. So once you have the skeleton, what I call the, the skeletal template in blue, you're really just putting kind of meat on the bones. And it's not too difficult to flush it out fully. In this design, I have pretty narrow uh, upper arms connecting to the chest, which gives a lot of space for the chest muscles, and then really heavy forearms to support these, these massive claws. So now I have to think, what kind of animal reference might I find? And I'm thinking for that, for this, that's like a, uh, a beetle of some sort probably a rhinoceros beetle. For the hands, I'm thinking maybe something that digs a lot, you know, a mole. For the chest, I'm thinking maybe a bear, something big and broad, or a, um, a bird of prey, you know, something with a big wingspan, because that will give, give you those chest muscles. And that can extend to the neck as well. And then for the back, I'm thinking maybe a lion or a dog, right? And then for the spikes, so that's already, you know, several different references. Uh, for the spikes and for some of the textures throughout, I'm thinking maybe pine cones, something natural but aggressive. And... And then, of course, for this kind of rock-like finish that I might bring through, um, I'm thinking obsidian. So you can definitely use more than just animal references. Then for the tail, I'll probably bring in like some kind of combination of rock and pinecone. So that's, that's my vision anyway. Now my sketch, this tells me kind of the angle and the way to attach, attack it. And this is a three-quarter view. It's inspired by both of these Pokemon poses. It shows you the silhouette. So if you squint and just see the, the shape, like I might change the position of this arm a little bit, like tuck that in, because that will look a little bit better. But once you have that shape, that's going to be the kind of blueprint for your composite. Just like the sketch for your landscape helped you put everything together, this will help you build your creature in a way that's coherent. And the best uh, creature designs, in my opinion, whether they're Star Wars or Star Trek or whatever, don't have too many components, right? But they make strong decisions with the components they do have. So notice I don't have multiple heads, multiple tails. I don't have arms and wings. Um, I just have some different textures, but the focus is really clearly on the chest and arms and then on this, this ridge along the back, right? 
So that's what I'm working with. Okay, I'm gonna save that sketch. What's funny is uh, in between sketching it on Monday and coming into class this morning on Wednesday, I described it to my, my 10 year old son who likes to draw creatures. And so he did a sketch without seeing mine using basic shapes traditionally. And so I'm gonna capture that as well and put it in my sketchbook. So to do that with the computer, I use FaceTime, right? I put the sketch on the screen, I'll put it this way. And even though I'm in low light, it shouldn't matter. Command Shift 4, those three keys, turn my, my mouse cursor into a bullseye. That then allows me to do a targeted screen grab. Now this is a much more aggressive, epic design than mine. My son's creature, he uh, described as being taller than Godzilla Earth. And Godzilla Earth is very big, if you've seen the Netflix series. So I'm going to double click that, that screenshot, open it up, uh, rotate it, which you can do under tools, rotate it to the left, up to the left again, to the left again. And then I can do adjust color tools. And then I'm actually going to flip it because FaceTime does a mirror image. So I'm going to flip horizontal. And with adjust color, I can say auto levels to brighten it up. I can take down the, the saturation so it's not so colorful. And I can make it brighter just so it's a little bit cleaner. And then sharpen it a little bit. There it is. So I like. Um, I liked his drawing. I am inspired by his drawing because he was really focused on the head, right? And since the head is the focal point of a creature, it's not a bad idea to have kind of multiple approaches. If I was actually getting paid to do a character design, I wouldn't just do one sketch, you know, inspired. I would do multiple, you know, thumbnails, small sketches, small tries at different silhouettes. But of course, it wouldn't be under such a, a tight time constraint as one project, right? So you can definitely do that if you're if you're um, unhappy with your sketch. Then what I recommend is you take the inspiration of that. I'll do this in black, and then just do what I call silhouette drawings. So say, okay, that silhouette looks kind of like this, just really scribbly. It's heavy at the front. It's lean at the back, right? So that's that silhouette. How can I mess with that? Well, what if I really exaggerate those proportions, right? Make the head kind of big, but then stretch that out and then make the chest a lot bigger and stretch that out. Do I like that better? And then make the back end the same. So you see how much just that shape really changes the design. Or what if I do the opposite? I keep the head small, keep the arms where they are, and then I really exaggerate the back end so it almost looks more like a weasel or something. You still have all these same components, all these same references, but you see how much that silhouette changes what the character would look like. Right? And this is also a good way to try out, okay, how big can these spikes be? You know, How will that affect the silhouette? Yeah, that's not bad. Or if I have a neck like this, what if I had, you know, like a massive fin or spikes on the back? And you see on the weasel, the spikes don't work as well because it just doesn't feel as um, considered. So you're keeping the, the general <laughs> silhouette in mind and then you're sketching enough to understand the anatomy and how things connect. Okay. So I'm going to save my sketch, and now I'm going to start finding reference. So these are some past student examples. You'll see their sketch. You're going to submit your sketch the same way. It's a good way to acknowledge the deadline just to get your sketch up into this folder. And you can see all the different ideas. So 
uh, I put this student's work in because they did this nice thing of taking these two different or taking the Pokemon they're inspired by and then actually turning it into a silhouette in Photoshop. And then they took their finished project, they went back to their sketch. So this is what they ended up with and then showed how the silhouette was inspired and very similar, even though the creatures are very much different, right? Based on reference you can find. But the important parts of your sketch are not how beautifully you draw, it's how you understand how things are angled and what structures of the anatomy you need to find reference for. Because that tells you what angle you're looking for in the reference and how much overlap you need. And it can get kind of complicated, but it will all work out. So that's what we're going for. So I was playing with Google Images, but the problem is so many of the images in their new system. So if I do a Google search for weird mammal hands and claws, I will get a lot of images. I have a nice mole image here. Problem is it's only 520 by 403 pixels. So if I open that image, I know you guys know this, but it's good to put it in a video. And then I open the image in a new tab. Not only is that a lot of steps, but it's to see that the image is no bigger than this. And so when I actually print it, it would look like this. Very rasterized, very unsatisfying, you know, like a smudged drawing. So I am looking for reference, just like for the landscape, that is 3,000 pixels or better. So I can go to tools and say size large, but that's only 1,000 pixels or, or better. And so then I see it, and that's 2,000 pixels. That's pretty good. And maybe just for something like hands, that would be enough. But you're really looking for 3,000 plus. And then... So you end up scrolling through a lot. And then sometimes they are mislabeled uh, anyway. So I, I still haven't found one that's over 3,000. So I was finding that with Google, I was having to compromise a lot on quality. So this one's 3,000 even though the actual creature is kind of small in there. Oh, this one's good, this sloth. But Google can give you good image, good, uh, uh, let's see, good ideas for what search terms to use, right? So a sloth isn't one that I sketched, but it might be a good idea. So then you check it, open image in new tab, and then you see how big it is. And this this is okay, but notice, you want it to be bigger than your screen, you know, for full size. So that's that's better, but it's not um, it's not ideal. Right. This one, open image a new tab, really zoom in. So that's a lot better. It gives me one hand, but notice it's a hand, not at the angle I need. Right. So it can be tough to find the right reference. So this is how I approach it. Instead of doing the Google thing, I might get inspired by Google for search terms. But then I'm finding Pixabay is, is a lot more useful. So if I use Pixabay and I just look for a mole, oh, let me spell it right. Then I know that these images are large enough. And when I download them, I know they're high quality. The one thing you want to be careful of is how focus is used, because we want reference that's sharp and in focus. And this looks pretty good. Though the background's out of focus, the things I want to use are in focus. Here's another one. And then you're going to start organizing them, right? Because you're not quite sure yet what reference you're going to use. So that, that pause is very good and pretty easy to select. And you know what? It's already at the right angle for my sketch. 
So this is what I do with my references. 